Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about animated spells, where to find them, and how to use them. To start off, there are a number of places you can find animated spells, both for free as well as a small fee. The first place to look though is actually on the setup page in the add-on modules list. Go to the install module and look at content packs and you can see there are some already available here. So these are the free packs included in Foundry, however these creators do have their own Patreon pages where they have alternative spells or different color effects. So I recommend giving them a look and checking it out, see if there's something there that interests you and you can use in your own games. If there's nothing here that you feel as though you can use somehow, uh, there is also always the Roll20 Marketplace as well because purchases there can be used in Foundry as well as being used in Roll20. You can just download them onto your computer and then move them over to Foundry, which is what I will be using later on with my fireball effect. I'll be putting a link down to some options in the description for that as well. After you have installed one of these packs, you can find all of the spells, all the templates it brings in, in your modules folder. Just going through it, navigating through. And at that point, if you want to copy it over into a different folder, you can, or you can just always navigate when you're selecting it later on. But let's go ahead and move on to the next part. Right, for the first part of the video, the only thing you'll need to have installed is the mess module. That is in addition to any content packs you want to have added in as well. So we go to our module settings, go to mess, bring some order into this mess, click this, go to templates, and what the mess module accomplishes it is it allows you to use WebMs whereas Foundry VTT only allows the use of static images. So here you can change any of these. You can change circle, cone, rectangle, and what it will do is anytime you cast a spell that is a circle template, that is fire, it will use this template. Anytime you cast a spell that is a cone, that is cold, it will use this template. This is the generic, however there is a way to override this as well, which is what we're going to get into next. Go ahead and close this for now but you can add in, play around with all of this as you wish. Next, we're gonna to go to our character sheet, open it up, go to our spellbook, and taking a look at my spellbook, I want to go next to the spell firewall and click edit here. And I'm going to go to details and down to template texture and browse files. So I already have some files here. These are various WebMs I've already included in my game or that I can use in my game and I've already selected one of them for this character for the fireball spell. Now if I had had a spell also on the module settings it would be used inherently in this but this would override anything I have in the settings. So this takes priority over the settings list. So keep that in mind when you are selecting your spells. All right, so let's take a look and see how that works. So I go to the spell, I'm going to cast the spell, I'm going to use a measure template, and I'll move it around, and it takes a little bit of time sometimes to load, but there it is. So now I see that the animated spell has gone through, and because of mess, I can see it clearly. Whereas if I only had the core foundry, it would be a static image. Now there is one thing I don't like necessarily, and that is that unfortunately, let's go back to my character sheet. And I want to select, say I want to, I don't like this anime spell anymore, I want to use a different one. And we go to browse. And whereas I could usually browse through images just fine without any problems and see the images by selecting here. WebMs, they only look like this. I don't know if there's a module that can fix this right now. If you happen to know of one, please let me know. But you do need to kind of know what it's going to look like, at least with Base Foundry, before you go to your navigation tab. So the mess module works really well for AoE spells. Those are spells that are cast and are in one spot, such as Fireball or Grease or Fog Cloud. It does not work, though, as well for spells that follow you around, that are centered on self, that are centered on the caster, such as Spirit Guardians. So we're going to be looking at a way you can make that work in your game as well. But it does require a little bit more work and it does require more modules. So the modules we're going to be using are Token Attacher as well as the Select Anywhere tool. 
select tool everywhere. That's what it is. Those are the two ones we're mainly using. You can also choose to use the token magic tool as well. So let's go ahead and get started and show off how you can make this work. The first thing as you did before with mess is you need to go into your character sheet. You need to go into the spell book and you need to change the template for your spell for spirit guardians which I've already done that. I'm using a template that I picked up from JB2A. I got it from their Patreon page. As I said earlier, please check them out. They are doing a fantastic job creating lots of animated spells and the Patreon I think is really reasonably priced. So give it a look. After I've selected the template, I can go back and I need to cast the spell. Oh, let me try that again. I need to rest first and then cast the spell. So I'll do a rest and then go back and take two. Here we are. Now, Spirit Guardian, since it follows me around, is not particularly useful over there. So let's go into how I can have this template attached to my token, attached to the character. All right, so now we have our template on the scene. We need to attach it to our token. The thing that we're gonna do first is we're going to select our token and then go over to the left-hand side and click Open Attaching UI. If you did it correctly, you will see your token right here in the top left-hand corner. Next, we go to measurement controls, which is also our template controls. And we are going to move this around so that it is right on top of our character. The reason we can select it for the open attaching UI tool is because of select everywhere tool. So our modules are working together right now. We need to click the element and click attach selected elements. And if we did it correctly, we can go back to our character, move it around, and our character moves around with our aura. Pretty simple. And then if we ever needed to, say, get rid of it, we could either go to our measurement controls and delete it, or we could just detach it right here. All right, so you can use this freely for any spell that is cast on self that has an aura uh, to give you, nice, give, you, give yourself a nice little aura going around it that's animated. Right, there is one more thing I want to show off, and that is how you can also use the Token Magic FX module if you wanted to change the appearance in some ways. By using Token Magic FX, you can change the way that the base templates appear in a number of different ways. I have added in a glowing circle here. Let me show you how I did that, as well as how you can add in a number of different features. So you go to Module Settings, go to Template Settings. Go down to, I went down to Radiant because this deals Radiant damage. However, you could do it, uh, change things in many ways. So this is a glowing circle, as I said, but I want to now do Flames. Now, it is worth noting that if you change this, it will not update the, any templates that have already been created. It will only create new templates. It will only update new templates that are made. So I'll press Save, Save Changes. And let's go ahead and go back to our character. Go down to our spell book. Very quickly check to make sure I have, yep, I have the spell needed. Cast the spell and click right there. And I can see how this appearance is different both from the second one I put produced as well as the initial one. So you can change this in a number of different ways and get the effect that you really want for your game. This is where I'm going to end the video. I hope this has helped. As I've stressed, I really think that the Foundry community is fantastic in how much they have produced and how much of it, honestly, is free. There is a lot of free content already out there. And the stuff that isn't free, is very. there's a very small fee behind it. I suggest if you can, if you're able to, support any of these creators because they are doing some amazing work. All right, that is where I'm going to end the video. I hope this has helped. Again, if there are any questions, please put them down in the comments below. Happy to help as much as I can. Thanks, everyone.